Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Julie and I spent the rest of the afternoon getting to know each other better and filling in some blanks. We looked through my clothes and my huge collection of photos, and then we let the dogs play outside for a while. Julie and I spent a lot of time looking around the house together. She liked what I had done and gave me ideas for some of the rooms I hadn't decorated or furnished yet. We talked, and we talked about everything and anything. The day went by so quickly because we were having so much fun with each other. It almost seemed like a dream that it was so easy and comfortable to be with each other. Julie and I decided to make dinner together. She told me she wasn't the best cook, but she'd be a great helper. We were listening to a mix of country music. We danced barefoot in the kitchen between steps of cooking while the three dogs watched from the next door den. We made beef stew pretty quickly and warmed up some bread that went well with it. We brought the soup into the den in big soup cups and Julie poured each of us a glass of wine. We sat on the couch and looked out the large sliding glass windows at the forest and valley below and the stars above. This was one of my favorite things to do. We had finished eating and been sitting there for a while when the CD was finally done playing. Why don't you choose some more music to listen to while I clean the kitchen? Julia said. Okay, but when you come back here, it will cost you another glass of wine. I said, I think I can handle that, as I carried the dirty dishes back to the kitchen. The dogs followed me home, and I fed them dinner. When I went back into the living room, Julie was playing more music. Most of it was slow, soft country music. She was stretched out on the couch and looked wonderful in her jeans and sweater with a geometric pattern. I sat down next to her and gave her a new glass of wine. I sipped my wine and thought about the day for a moment. It was crazy to see how the day had gone from the beginning, when we were almost fighting in our conversation, to revealing ourselves, to almost getting to know each other better. In a real contrast, the last few hours had seemed and been some of the most romantic hours of my life. Julie took my hand and led me back out onto the big dance floor where we danced again. We danced for a long time and then went back to sitting on the couch. Back in the kitchen, I went to get more wine. I was standing at the counter and turned around to get something off the island countertop. To my surprise, Julie was standing right behind me. I was shocked at first, but I quickly got over it, and Julie's eyes had a very calm look to them. Would you like to go back into the den? I could only nod my head in agreement and follow her hand back to the couch. I swore that my hand felt cold and shook. On the couch, we kept asking each other, are you okay? I nodded. Did you like that? I nodded in a more excited way. Do you want to keep going? Asked Julie. Yes, yes. I was able to say. Julie smiled. Julie helped me get back on the couch, put her legs around my waist, and gave me the biggest hug. The first thing I saw of her was her long hair. They danced there for a moment and tickled my neck as they did so. I felt like I was in a safe place because her hair was all around me. We talked for a long time, maybe an hour and a half or more. I'm sorry to stop, but I have to go to work in the morning. Julie almost ran out of breath as she said this. I looked at the clock and saw that it was almost 2 a.m. I said, I get it, though I'm a little bit disappointed. The same couch again? I might be back here around 4 o'clock. I'd like that and as soon as possible. I led Julie back to her room by holding her hand. Julie fell asleep quickly, and I was right behind her. I was as happy as I had ever been. The next morning, around 6.30, I woke up and ran to the kitchen to make Julie a quick breakfast. I put water on to boil, then ran back up to Julie's room to wake her up. I gave her a gentle hug and woke her up. I told you, you need to be on time for the meeting. Julie sat up kind of groggily. About then, I heard the whistle of the tea kettle. Get ready to leave and I'll make you a quick breakfast. I ran back to the kitchen and poured the hot tea, made some juice and toast. When I let the dogs out, Julie came into the kitchen. I don't have time to eat because I have to run the whole way. I smiled and patted her on the shoulder and told her, don't be silly, you can have my truck. Get something to eat and take it easy until you get there. I got a lot of nourishment for myself last night. 
she said with a smile. I don't know if she was relaxed or not. Julie told me that these meetings were very stressful for her because she didn't feel like her bosses supported her very well. Me too. Julie went to her meeting and then left. She told me that they have these meetings about once every three months to get news and give their bosses anything they need. Julie has one other officer working in this area, which is pretty big. I'll see you this afternoon and thanks for taking me there. She told me this with a wave and a quick hug. Be safe and get back here soon. I'll say goodbye as soon as I can. Julie left, and when I was done with my juice, I let the dogs back in and fed them. On Monday, I wanted to brush the dogs, clean the house, and make Julie a special dinner. I thought about getting some fresh flowers, but Julie took the truck. The florist is in town, which is 36 miles away, so I decided not to. I did my daily aerobics and then went back outside with the dogs to brush them. After that, I went home and started cleaning and making dinner. I read about a mushroom soup recipe online and decided to make it. I had all the ingredients at home and a walk-in freezer downstairs. I made filet mignons for the main dish. A simple dessert I made was with frozen peaches and yogurt. When I was done getting everything ready, it was almost three o'clock, and I knew Julie would be back soon, so I went to take a bath. Julie was going to have a hard day, so I wanted everything to be nice when she got home. I took my time getting my hair done, and then I put on clothes. I started by putting on some perfume, and then I put on a set of silk undergarments that I had bought in New York City. I chose a long, flowery skirt that reached my ankles, and a white frilly blouse with lots of ruffles around the buttons and down the sleeves. I ended with a pair of shoes with white heels. I did my makeup and went back to the kitchen because Julie would be back soon. Just as Julie walked through the door, I was done pouring two glasses of iced tea. I said, hello, Julie, I'm in here. Julie came into the kitchen from the living room side, and I could tell right away that she had a bad meeting. Are you okay? She said, yeah, I am. Sounds very convincing. So take this glass and go back to the couch. I'll join you right away to hear more. I went in and sat down next to her on the couch. She was leaning forward and putting her arms on her legs. Her muscles were very tense. Have you tried any of the iced tea? And do you want to talk about how your day went? I asked as I rubbed her shoulders some more. I don't know what's wrong with that guy, but I hate him. I do everything I'm supposed to do and more, but he keeps passing me over. At this point, Julie was almost in tears. I'm sorry, but he keeps choosing someone else over me. I've been eligible for a promotion for three years, but he keeps stopping me. I really think it's because of who I am that he doesn't give it to me. First of all, every year you have to pass written tests. Part of it also has to do with how long you've been working there or your seniority. Some of it comes from the things you see at work, like arrests, like the one you saw. Okay, so how do you do in all of these? I got perfect scores on all of my tests. I've been in service for nine years without a break, and my enforcement and conservation results are slightly better than average. Then you're right. He is doing something wrong. Can't you find a way to get around him and talk to someone higher up? You don't get it, Missy. Everyone in the top tier can be like this. So that's bias. Why don't you play that card? I could, but it would take a long time to get results. And my work environment might get even worse because no one likes a whistleblower. Okay, so we need to think about this more. Are you hungry? In about 40 minutes, I can have dinner ready. I'm so hungry I didn't even eat lunch today, Julie said, and things were starting to look a little bit better. Come hang out with me in the kitchen. I'm sorry to have dumped all of this on you. I didn't even hug you when I got home. She paused and gave me a hug. I also didn't tell you how beautiful you look today. What's the occasion? I just wanted to look good for you because I knew you were going to have a hard day and I wanted everything to be nice when you got home. I think nothing would make me happier than seeing you every day when you come home. That also makes me happy. Even though I brought a bag with some of my stuff and clothes in it, okay? Sure, you know you should show me your place one day soon. Okay, what about dinner? Is there anything I can do to help? Please put the table together and get more wine. How do you like your steak? Steak, yum, medium, just a little pink. Okay, dinner will be ready in about 10 minutes. We ate in the dining room with candles lit and a view of the sunset. During dinner, Julie sat back and talked about how good everything was. 
After that, Julie helped me clean up, and we fed the dogs together. Then we went to the bedroom and put Julie's clothes in another closet there. Hey, Missy, can I also have some space in a drawer? I also want to find somewhere safe to store my gun. Take the dresser on the wall by the window, of course. Julie kept putting things away, and I ran to the bathroom to brush my teeth and touch up my makeup. Julie said to meet her on the couch. When I got to the living room, Julie had the stereo on, but it was not very loud. Come here, pretty boy. I wasn't used to hearing that because most of my old girlfriends didn't like it when I dressed up. I think it was because they thought I was trying to be better than them. I sat down on the couch. We were back where we were the night before, before I knew it. Julie was still wearing her work clothes, and we stopped long enough for me to help her take off her hiking boots. Before I forget, can you drive me to my house in the morning so I can get my Jeep? Julie asked. So you will also have a way to get around. I would be happy to. I didn't know how to handle what I thought was coming next, so I bought myself some time by saying, I need another glass of wine. So I ran to the kitchen to get another glass of wine and to think for a moment. I had only been alone for a short time when I jumped a little when I saw Julie sitting on the island part of the counter. Sorry, you caught me off guard. Are you okay? Julie asked, and I nodded. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just a little bit scared. What about... I don't know. I was afraid of letting you down. Missy, you won't disappoint me, I promise. I've been looking forward to our time together so much. Okay, I'm sorry. Stop saying you're sorry, and let's go back into the other room. Julie then took my hand and led me back into the living room. Before we sat down, I took off my shoes. We sat on the couch. For the next ten or so minutes, we talked like two teenagers again, tickling each other here and there and making each other laugh. Then she kissed me, and the night got only crazier. Thanks for watching. The rest won't be viewable on YouTube, so check out Patreon if you want more.